What's up CJ's Keto Kitchen family? This is CJ and Sarah. It's time for another Keto Conversation. Let's get started. All right, so we're back with another Keto Conversation. We haven't done one of these in a while. Uh, we just had things going on with life and family and travel and um, but we're back at it and we want to talk about uh, some things you can do. Uh, your title here, Sarah, says you've loosened up your keto, now what? And I'm going to say you've fallen off the keto wagon <laughs> and it's run you over, now what should you do? And it's dragging That's you down the road. the official title. <laughs> All right, so seven things you ought to do next if you find yourself in this situation. So one of the things that's not on this list is I'll say uh, I wouldn't spend a lot of time beating myself up about something that's already happened. You know it's happened, and you just need to figure out what you what you want to do. So that's the first thing I will say. But you've got notes here. Why don't you start through the notes, and then I'll kind of figure out how to insert stuff in. So this is uh, basically a, uh, a list of seven things that you might notice as symptoms that you maybe need to have a refresh for your keto diet and then seven things that you might be able to do to help. So some of the symptoms that you might need a refresh are you've noticed that your blood sugar readings are high again. Maybe you had gotten them down when you first started the ketogenic lifestyle and maybe now if you're keeping track of them you're noticing that they're starting to rise again. That could be one of the symptoms. Another thing is maybe you're having intense sugar cravings and you probably will know right away if this speaks to you as something that you are going through. And when we say sugar cravings it can also include artificial sweetener. Right. And or carbs and or because carbs. carbs are mainly sugar based. So if you are feeling like you're having intense cravings for carbohydrates, that can also go into the topic of intense sugar cravings. So another one is uh, having feelings of sugar crashes after meals or blood sugar drops after meals. That generally means that you don't have a balanced blood glucose and that can definitely be a sign that maybe you're not eating enough protein or you're not eating enough fat and you're eating too many carbs because your body is not able to regulate itself. Another thing is inflammation. If you're noticing more aches and pains than maybe you once had on your early days of the keto diet, maybe there's something within your diet, something you've added or things that you're eating more of that don't agree with you and your body is letting you know in the form of inflammation. So that can be aches and pains, that can be skin conditions, it can be a number of things that is a symptom of inflammation. Huh. So another one is bloating, low energy, brain fog, uh, keto flu-like symptoms, just feeling kind of yucky and you're not sick. So if you don't have a cold or the regular flu and you are feeling some of these symptoms, then it could be that you are not, uh, that you need a little bit of a refresh or a little bit of a tightening of your belt, so to speak, in the ketogenic lifestyle. Okay. Okay. So those are the symptoms that might speak to you as maybe you want to do something a little bit different to try and change it so that you start feeling a little bit better. A little bit more successful maybe you've stopped losing weight or you've put on some weight that of course can be a symptom that nobody wants to talk about or think about yeah and, and some of us we've hit plateaus we've hit plateaus for a long time we've continued to try to do keto but we can't can't get through these plateaus and you frustrate it so sometimes some of those types of things will also lead to you lead to some of the other symptoms because like I said you're stuck anyway so you kind of feel like well you know what am I doing so right. but what can you do seven things that you can do to I guess kind of get yourself unstuck or reboot your uh, keto diet keto lifestyle uh, one of the first things you can do is try intermittent fasting uh, we practice intermittent fasting. well I'll say Sarah practices more than I do 
she practices it very consistently. Uh, you were doing, talk, talk about some of the stuff you've been doing. I mean, I would do like a 16-8 where I would go 16 hours without eating and then have an 8 hour eating window. That's, in our house, that's like training wheels. <laughs> it is it is considered training wheels. I mean, 12 hours is basically training wheels. That's usually, you know, what you would do if you went to bed and you went 12 hours without a meal. But that's not even a standard anymore in the United States because people eat all the way up until bedtime. However, I have, uh, this month is my keto anniversary, so I've been practicing the ketogenic lifestyle for six years now. And I have been practicing intermittent fasting in some form or another for the last five years. I didn't start intermittent fasting until I had been on the ketogenic diet for about a year. But I have done every kind of intermittent fasting. I've done, you know, 16 hours all the way up to three days. I, you know, have done alternate day fasting. I've done all different types of fasting. I enjoy fasting. It works for my body. It's not necessarily for everyone, but I definitely recommend giving it a try. Start out small. Start out with 12 hours, then work to 14 hours, then work to 16 hours. It's not a race and you don't have to rip off the band-aid. You can go ahead and pace yourself. Try a certain set of hours for a while. And I have found something too that I needed to retrain myself for is practicing time-restricted eating within that fasting window. So say you are practicing 16-8. So you have an eight-hour eating window. That does not mean that you need to be eating for the entire eight hours of that window. It's best if you can have a couple of meals within that window and then have a length of time in between those meals. So say you break your fast at you know, 10 o'clock, eat a meal, eat breakfast or an early lunch, and then go four or five, at least four, preferably five, before you have another meal. Because then you give your body a chance for the insulin to go down again, and it makes your fast more effective. So just because you have an eight hour eating window does not mean you need to be eating for eight hours like a buffet, it's not. Because then you're having a continual insulin rush all day long like like you are hooked up to an IV of insulin and no one wants that and it can actually be very detrimental to you and frustrate you because you're thinking that fasting is not working for you when really it could be all right so the next one is drink lots of water uh, we have a note here says electrolytes but water just regular water will be helpful as well but part of being on keto or even staying on keto is to make sure your electrolytes are in balance and uh, there's a lots lots of ways to do it um, and I will say that everything that we're talking about here you can find information on YouTube about it you can probably find information on our channel about it uh, about a lot of the stuff that we're talking about today um, electrolytes now we take we have electrolyte pills that we take we also take stuff by Perfect Keto that we really enjoy, but there's a lot of electrolyte options out there. Yeah, I think Keto Chow makes drops. I think they're what my mom takes. Yeah, so, so there's, there's, there's a lot of, lot of yeah. options out there for you. And, and again, keeping your electrolytes in balance is important uh, just in general, not just for doing keto, but especially if you're doing keto. Uh, it's important to do that. Especially in the summertime, if it's really warm where you're at and you could you could be losing a lot of fluids. And also, if you are keeping your insulin low, when insulin goes down, your body tends to release water. And so if you are flushing out all of your minerals when you release that and you're not replenishing them, then you could end up feeling really yucky. So. Okay, so the next one is eat fat when you're hungry. So eating foods that are high in fat and protein when you are hungry, when you do get hungry, instead of reaching for things that are higher in carb, even if they are low carb foods, is going to make you feel better and probably help boost your ability to lose weight. So one of the strategies you can use is to um, try to shake up how you, what you eat, and then even consider shaking up your diet in general. So when we talk about what you eat, that's options with food. You know, stop eating the same thing all the time. 
I understand why we eat the same thing all the time because it makes it easier to do stuff when you know what you what you, you know when you have a routine. And but one of the problems with that is you'll get bored with it, and then ultimately you may not continue because you you're just mentally tired of eating the same old stuff all the time. But I will say that well, the next thing about varying your diet. That's something I don't think people talk about. We talk about enough in the keto community. Um, you know, we've been doing keto now for you said you're coming up on your six year anniversary. So it'll be six years for you. So in December. yeah, six mm -hmm. years for both of us, where we've done keto, keto as a lifestyle, uh, where we lost a lot of weight, uh, and then we didn't really try to continue to lose weight. But one of the things, just like, and I will say this. I will say this is that no matter what no matter how you eat your body will adjust to it and you because that's what your body's supposed to do so if you have a scarcity of food your body will adjust itself so that, that it can deal with that to keep you alive if you have plenty of food it will adjust to that to help keep you alive and so even with the keto diet, there are times when you need to make changes to that diet and consider doing other things. So one of the other options that might be available to you is carnivore. Um, a carnivore diet where you're basically eating all, I'm going to oversimplify this, meats or... Anything that comes from an animal. Anything that comes detail. from an animal. Okay. So that includes dairy products generally as well, and eggs. Right. And now we just started this BBBE thing uh, by Dr. Barry. Uh, it's all the rage, at least in our house. He had an article in Women's World, yep. and that kind of re-instigated the excitement in this carnivore challenge. So this is, a, this is a really strict version of carnivore. Correct. Uh, the B stands for, help me with these B's, so beef. Beef, bacon, butter, and eggs. Okay, so. So that's no dairy. Right. Because butter and eggs are loosely considered dairy, but, uh, so no cheese, uh, no cream, that kind of thing as far as dairy goes. So, and beef is the preferred meat in this particular instance because from what I understand, Dr. Barry explaining it, other types of meat like chicken and pork, they are monogastric, meaning they only have one stomach. Ruminant animals or animals with hooves that paw the earth like sheep and goats and beef, buffalo, different types of venison, they all have a multi-chambered gastric system, so like three stomachs. And apparently there is something in that that adds to the benefit of the nutrition in their meat. So that is why beef is the preference for this version of extreme carnivore. Right. We're in our second day of this. Uh, we'll probably keep people posted. It's somehow. our intent to do 30 days. He suggests 30 to 90 days. Okay. But it's our so. intent to at least find out how 30 days goes. Yeah. So it's, this is day two. Today was easier than day one. I think a lot of it has to do with, with, with its mental. Um, but I also think you need to, you'll have to also figure out how to deal with, uh, just little things that you'll figure out that you can't have, then you have to figure out how to deal with it and make substit substitutions. It's, it's been quite eye-opening for me. Um, I've realized myself that I am very dairy dependent. Like, the Land of Lakes lady, I could be on that label instead of her. I love me some dairy, especially cheese and heavy cream. So I have found that that's been really eye-opening for me personally. And then also I have noticed over, you know, the last probably three years, the creeping of the um, artificial sweeteners of every kind um, creeping right. into my diet and, and my dependence on them on a, in a daily basis. And I want to stop that. I know when I first began the ketogenic lifestyle, I went through a period of time 
where I deliberately stopped having anything sweet because I wanted to get out of that habit of having something sweet after my meals because I was raised that way and I knew that I needed to break that cycle and that has slowly creeped back and that's why this is, it's time for a refresh for right. me personally. Right. So again, consider uh, changing up your diet and carnivore is a good option. And then again, this BBE, BBBE thing is a really uh, strict version of car carnivore. You can, we'll, we'll post Dr. Barry's videos in the video description yeah. and then you have to make the decision well, and, and whether or not you want to try to do it. Yeah, and the the thought behind it is that you might practice this, you know, for a month or two, then go back to low carb or ketogenic eating, add in more vegetables, start adding in foods, see how you feel. And then you can do that for a couple of months and then go back into a month of stricter carnivore. Just kind of giving your body the opportunity to maximize the lowering of your insulin for weight loss and better health is the theory behind this. Right. All right. And then uh, another thing you might consider doing is exercise. Um, exercise, especially if the weather is good, could be as simple as just working in your yard. Uh, it could be walking around the block, walking around the fields, you could wherever, depending on where you live. Uh, or you can actually, you know, do things like... Heavy duty carnivore, or not carnivore, heavy duty cardio or something else. Yeah, yeah. or weight training. Right. So, you know, figure out how to incorporate, how to incorporate exercise because it can help you uh, get back on track as well. Uh, the last two things are get quality sleep and try supplements. I've been sleeping pretty good lately for me, but I'm always, I always struggle with sleep. Um, I've talked about it in the past. There's some products that I've taken in the past. Uh, this is not a commercial for Perfect Keto, but I do take, I've taken their sleep collagen before. Um, I've taken some stuff by their sister company called uh, Equip. Uh, they have a sleep formula as well. But sleep is important for your health. It's important for your body. And um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of sleep. But I do know that I need to get it because Sarah tells me. <laughs> I'm the opposite. I'm a sleeping yeah. beauty. I love sleep. Sleep is amazing. So, yes, and I'm constantly digging at him to get more sleep. Yeah, and we, would, we could do a whole video on sleep because my opinions of sleep are totally different than hers. But I can't... But scientifically, there I, is a link. Yeah, there is a link, but I can tell you that uh, when I do get good sleep, I do feel much better, and it's just a matter of continuing to get that on a regular basis. And then the last thing is try supplements. Try supplements like MCT powders, oils, uh, it's considered ketones, um, if you need to do that to kind of help you get reset again. But do whatever you need to do to get yourself back on track if you're ready to get back on track. Because really that's one of the first things is you've got to be ready to do this. So, um, you know, we look at ourselves all the time as far as what we need to do, what changes we need to make. And so we don't just do these things as for, so we can do a video. We actually are doing these, have this topic because these are things that we know that we need to do and things we need to tighten up. If you're new to our channel, this is our Keto Conversations segment. We don't do this every, we don't do conversations every week where we sit down. Sometimes we do food unboxings. Sometimes we do what we eat videos, uh, grocery hauls but uh, we try to do content twice a week, sometimes preempted, but uh, we do try to do that. We appreciate you being here. Consider subscribing. We hope you have a great rest.